What is Coronation Street? Not only is it the best show on earth, it's the longest running soap opera ever. Coronation Street started back in 1960 and focuses on the everyday lives of working class people in Manchester, England. It has the best writers, funny one-liners and amazing actors. This show is not to be missed. We are going to look at an episode today to teach you some new words, expressions, phrasal verbs, idioms and British slang. Today we are looking at the episode of the 10th of January 2022. I'm going to show you the clip, explain what is being said and then show you the clip again so you can understand what's going on better the second time. So let's get started. Yeah. Put your back into it. I want everything to be ship shape. Put your back into it and ship shape. To put your back into something means to work very hard at something, to put a lot of effort into something. If you want to get that floor clean, you'll have to put your back into it. And ship shape means in good order. So if I say my health is in ship shape, it means I'm very healthy. Let's look at that clip again. Yeah. Put your back into it. I want everything to be ship shape. And now let's look at the next clip. I'm sorry, bringing everyone down. To bring somebody down, what does that mean? Well, it means to make someone unhappy or depressed. Listen again. I'm sorry, bringing everyone down. And the next clip. He is making a huge mistake. Been getting back with her, shacking up together. To shack up with somebody. This means to start living in the same house as somebody else, normally a sexual partner, without being married. Check that clip again. He is making a huge mistake. Been getting back with her, shacking up together. And the next clip. Well, why didn't you tell me? Sorry. I've worn out two stress balls with my squeezing and my fretting. I didn't know where to put myself. To fret. They say fretting, which is obviously the present continuous. It means to be nervous or worried. Watch again. Well, why didn't you tell me? Sorry. I've worn out two stress balls with my squeezing and my fretting. I didn't know where to put myself. And now let's look at the next clip. How can you pack in so much stuff for only there an hour or so? Because last time we went to see the audiologist, Al had spewed his gut soap. Now here you heard to spew your guts up. Okay, if you spew your guts up, it means you vomit. How nice. Wanna see that clip again? How can you pack in so much stuff only there an hour or so? Cause last time we went to see the audiologist, Al had spewed his guts up. Next. I need a new one, this one's minging. Minging, I love this word. Minging, but it's not a positive word. It actually means it smells bad. Something that smells bad or is ugly. In fact, here, Joseph thinks his jumper is old, smelly and horrible, basically. I need a new one. This one's minging. And the next clip. Oh, grab your bag. We need to get a wiggle on. Get a wiggle on. Wiggle means to move your bottom like this. But to get a wiggle on means to hurry up. So, get a wiggle on. Watch that clip again. Oh, grab your bag, we need to get a wiggle on. And here's the next clip. Morning, roomies. Morning. Morning. Roomies? What are roomies? Well, this is a cute way to say roommates. The people you live with, you share a house with, or even a room. Hence, roommates, roomies. Morning. And the next clip. We're not rolling in it, but we've got food in our bellies and a roof over our head. Rolling in it. Are you rolling in it? I'm not rolling in it. It means rich. To be rich. I'm rich. I'm rolling in it. Exactly the same. Watch the clip again. We're not rolling in it, but we've got food in our bellies and a roof over our head. And here's another one. Excuse me for gagging in, but my mate Clint could get hold of one for you. To gag in, to 
to gag in. What does that mean? It basically means to interrupt. Bernie, in this scene, interrupts Alia's and Zidane's conversation. Watch again. Excuse me for gagging in, but my mate Clint could get hold of one for you. And here's the next clip. What's happened? I kettled over. It fell off the curb. Craig kettled over and now he needs to use the wooden crutch to walk. To kettle over. It basically means to fall over. What's happened? I kettled over. It fell off the curb. Next. Yeah, I'm fine. More importantly, how are you? Fighting fit, me love. I'm sorry I spoke to the way I did yesterday. I shouldn't have done that was wrong. It doesn't matter. No harm done. Well, I've got to get off. Duty calls and that. Actually, um, come on a bit of a loose end. Fancy a cuppa? Now here in this clip, there are three things I want to look at. Fighting fit, at a bit of a loose end, and fancy a cuppa. Fighting fit means extremely healthy. Tim says he's fighting fit, but is he really? Aggie says she's at a bit of a loose end. No, she's not hanging on to something. She's not holding on to a rope. It means she has nothing to do. And fancy a cuppa? Everybody should learn this. It's very, very important if you want to visit England or speak to a British person. It means, would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, I'm fine. More importantly, how are you? Fighting fit, me love. I'm sorry I spoke to the way I did yesterday. I shouldn't have done that was wrong. It doesn't matter. No harm done. Well, I've got to get off. Duty calls and that. Actually, um, come on a bit of a loose end. Fancy a cuppa? And the next clip. Yeah, they should be letting me know any time now. I am stressed up to the eyeballs. Now here, you heard stressed up to the eyeballs. Oh. This means very, very stressed. So much stress in your body, it is full from your feet to your eyeballs, all the way to here. So you've got a little bit left. Yeah, they should be letting me know any time now. I am stressed up to the eyeballs. Next. Let me know how you got on. Yeah, well, I can tell you now. I've probably blown it. No. To blow it. Summer says, I've probably blown it. To blow it means to fail at a chance or an opportunity. She thinks she has failed at her chance to go to Oxford. She thinks she's blown it. Let me know how you got on. Yeah, well, I can tell you now. I've probably blown it. No. Next. I like a walk down memory lane just as much as the next person, but... A walk down memory lane. Aggie says to Tim, I like a walk down memory lane just as much as the next person. But where is she walking? Nowhere. Nowhere really. A walk down memory lane means to remember happy times from the past. I like a walk down memory lane just as much as the next person, but... Next. If there's something Ed doesn't want to hear, he zones out. Now in this clip, still with Aggie and Tim, she says, Ed, her husband, zones out. But what does to zone out mean? It means you, when you switch your brain off to stop paying attention to what is going on around you or what is being said. Many students do this when you're at school, obviously not in my lessons. My students never zone out. So if you zone out, you stop paying attention to what is going on around you. Aggie's husband, Ed, she says he normally zones out. If there's something Ed doesn't want to hear, he zones out. And the next clip. I don't have a word, see if they can squeeze you in today. Squeeze me for what? To squeeze somebody in. You're not squashing somebody into something. You're not putting a person in a tiny tube. Aggie and Tim both use this phrasal verb, to squeeze somebody in. She says, to squeeze you in. It means to find a way to do something in between 
all the other things you have to do. So I've got a really busy day, but I'll try and squeeze you in. I'll try and find time in the middle of the day or my busy day to spend time with you. Why don't I have a word, see if they can squeeze you in today? Squeeze me for what? And here's another clip. If you keep putting it off, it's only going to get worse. You're a scaremonger. You want to work on that bedside manner of yours. If I were you, I'd want to know what's what. Three things here we need to look at. To put something off, a scaremonger, and what's what. The first. To put something off means to delay something until a later time. A scaremonger is a person who tries to scare people by spreading stories to make everybody scared. Now, what's what? This means the facts of the situation. If I say, let's see what's what, I mean, let's look at the facts of this situation we have now. Check the clip again. If you keep putting it off, it's only going to get worse. You're a scaremonger. You want to work on that bedside manner of yours. If I were you, I'd want to know what's what. Next. Well, that's a relief. That's a pretty good spec as it goes. I tried to think where he's getting it though. Cash in hand, no questions asked. Good spec, cash in hand, and no questions asked. What do all these three things mean? Good spec is an abbreviated way to say good specifications. We can say it's an abbreviated way, a quick and easy way, or a lazy way of saying good specifications. After all, the word specifications is so long. Cash in hand. If you pay someone cash in hand, it means you pay them in cash, not with a credit card or debit card or any other way. Sometimes this is done, mm -hmm, you naughty people out there, to avoid paying tax. Now, no questions asked. When Zidane says no questions asked, he means he didn't ask questions, even if there are some questions he would like to ask, like, where did you steal that dishwasher from? Now check that clip again and listen for these three things. Well, that's a relief. That's a pretty good spec as it goes. I tried to think where he's getting it though. Cash in hand, no questions asked. Next. Well, how much was it? A grand. A grand? A grand means one thousand pounds. Simple. Well, how much was it? A grand. And here's the next clip. Why not? Big wads of cash going begging, be rude not to. Uh, don't be so flippant. Now here there are two things I want to look at. Wads of cash and it'd be rude not to. A wad means a number of usually flat and small thin objects all pressed together tightly. So imagine notes like 100 pound notes. Do they still exist? I don't think they do anymore. 20 pound notes. Lots of 20 pound notes all stuck together. This is a wad of notes. Zidane says wads of cash because he has lots of money from his father-in-law. And so he says big wads because there is a large amount of flat paper money all together. It would be rude not to. When he says this, he is truncating his sentence. The complete sentence should be, it would be rude not to use his cash. Check the scene again. Why not? Big wads of cash going begging, be rude not to. Uh, don't be so flippant. And the next clip. Need to get rid of it somehow, innit? Now in this scene, Zidane says, in it. I double N I T. But what does in it mean? It's actually a slang form of isn't it. But it isn't always used to mean isn't it. It is used to add emphasis to something you just said, in it. Need to get rid of it somehow, innit? And now let's look at the next clip. Hello, that jumper should be put in the bin. I can't chuck it, my dad might not buy me another. Now in this scene you hear the phrasal verb to chuck something. It means to throw something away in the bin. Hello, that jumper should be put in the bin. I can't chuck it, my dad might not buy me another. And here's the next clip. Right, come on kids, tea will be ready in a bit. Go and wash your hands please. Now in this scene, Fizz says the word tea. But is she talking about a cuppa? A brew? 
a cup of tea? No. Up north, many people refer to dinner as tea. So here, Fizz is referring to the food she is cooking. Check again. Do you see any tea? Right, come on kids. Tea will be ready in a bit. Go and wash your hands, please. And here's another clip. You ought to make a move soon. I've got a mountain of spuds waiting for me back at the ranch. But before we go, I'd like to run something past you. Now in this scene, I want to look at four things. Yes, four. Do you do four like this or four like this? I do four like this. Four things. To make a move, spuds, mm, back at the ranch, and to run something past you. Four things we need to look at. Stu says he needs to make a move. This means he needs to leave. Why? Because he has a mountain of spuds waiting back at the ranch. Is he a cowboy? No, he's not. Spuds is slang for potatoes. And by back at the ranch, he's referring to the restaurant where he works, which Yasmin, the woman he is talking to, owns. Yasmin then says she would like to run something past Stu. This means she wants to tell him something to get his opinion. Have a look again at this clip and see if now you understand everything and don't think that Stu is a cowboy. You ought to make a move soon. I've got a mountain of spuds waiting for me back at the ranch. But before we go, I'd like to run something past you. Next clip. You, you, you mustn't feel obliged, Yaz. I'm used to roughing it. It's no big deal. No, 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 it's a big deal for me. Here we have two things now I want to look at. To rough it and a big deal. To rough it means to live without comforts. Homeless people rough it when they sleep on the streets, for example. They survive without our everyday comforts. And a big deal? We say something is a big deal when we mean it is very, very important. You, you, you mustn't feel obliged, Yaz. I'm used to roughing it. It's no big deal. No, 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 it's a big deal for me. Next clip. Let's go to the hospital now chain you to that flaming chair just to make sure you don't do another runner. I might have won. Yeah, because if you lick it, I will run after you and bring you down. Now here in this scene in the waiting room of the hospital, you see Aggie speaking to Tim. Oh, she's being a little bit threatening, but she has every right to. There are four things I want you to understand in this scene. Flaming, to do a runner, leg it, and bring you down. Okay, now the word flaming, we use this instead of the famous F word. You all know what I'm talking about. Aggie says she's going to chain Tim to the flaming chair instead of saying the bad word, the F word, instead of swearing because Coronation Street is on before 9 p.m. after all. And she says she's going to do this before Tim does another runner. To do a runner means to run away. And then Aggie follows up with, because if you leg it, I'll run after you and bring you down. Leg it means to run away. It's another way to say run away. And bring him down means to make him fall over in this case. So she's going to chase him and knock him down and pin him down on the floor so he can't get away. Chain you to that flaming chair just to make sure you don't do another runner. I might have won. Yeah, because if you leg it. I will run after you and bring you down. Next clip. If I get in, and that's a pretty big if. To get in. Summer says, if I get in. Meaning, if she's accepted as a student at Oxford University. So she's not talking about getting into a car. Watch again. If I get in. And that's a pretty big if. Next clip. Rather at odds with the world. I, I wasn't one for conforming. Now here you see one of my favourite characters, Roy. Now, in this scene, you hear at odds with the world and I wasn't one for. If someone is at odds with the world or at odds with themselves, they are not happy and not sure about, they, about what they want from life. 
Now, if someone says, I wasn't one for, dot, 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 it can have two meanings. Either they didn't enjoy doing it or they didn't approve of it. Roy says he wasn't one for conforming, which means he didn't like to conform, to behave in a way others wanted him to. Check the scene again. Rather at odds with the world. I, I wasn't one for conforming. And now over to Bernie. Mm, bless your little cotton socks. Breaks me heart to hear you say that. None the worse for it. I made my own way. In this scene, you hear a beautiful British expression. Bless your little cotton socks. And also, none the worse for it. So starting with bless your little cotton socks, we say this when we want to express our affection towards someone because of something they have said or done. And none the worse for it means Roy wasn't harmed or damaged in any way by what he did. Let's check that again. Mm, bless your little cotton socks. Breaks me heart to hear you say that. None the worse for it. I made my own way. Next scene. And clubbing was my religion. Lived for it, I did. Mad for it, I was. Here, Bernie says, mad for it I was. But what's she talking about? What does she mean? If you're mad for it, it means you are very, very excited about something. Have another listen. And clubbing was my religion. Lived for it, I did. Mad for it, I was. Next. Oh, are you sure you've had enough, love? Yes, thank you, Auntie Fizz. Haven't you got lovely manners, Joseph? You could take a leaf out of his book, Hope. Now, in this scene, there are two things I want to explain to you. Auntie, they say Auntie Fizz. It's not A-N-T-I, it's A-U-N-T-I-E, Fizz. And take a leaf out of his book. Auntie is another word for aunt. And to take a leaf out of someone's book means to learn from someone else's behaviour and then you'll probably end up with some positive things, some good advantages. Watch again. Oh, are you sure you've had enough, love? Yes, thank you, Auntie Fizz. Haven't you got lovely manners, Joseph? You could take a leaf out of his book, Hope. Next clip. There you go. Help yourself. Now in this scene, Hope is being a little bit naughty. She's making Joseph do something that he shouldn't be doing. She says to him, help yourself, when she wants him to take money from her mum's purse. Obviously this is stealing, but the expression help yourself means to take something. If I bring in a tray of sandwiches and put them on the table, I would say help yourself so you can take as many as you like. So in this case, Hope is telling Joseph to take as much as he wants out of her mum's purse. Mm-mm, naughty naughty. Watch again. There you go, help yourself. And the next clip. Put it back. It's only 10 quid, do an extra five of sweets. Here you heard 10 quid. 10 quid is slang for 10 pounds. So one quid is one pound. Very good, you pass your mathematics exam. Put it back. It's only 10 quid, do an extra five of sweets. And the next clip. Joseph, what on earth are you doing? What on earth are you doing? Many students say to me, what a strange expression, do you really use this? Yes, we do. So what on earth are you doing? This means, I'm really surprised. So what on earth are you doing? What you're doing now is surprising me. I'm shocked. Joseph, what on earth are you doing? Next clip. Well, how long before he makes a full recovery? It can vary, uh, but I'd allow for a good 12 weeks. A good 12 weeks. Does that mean 12 weeks that are good? No, here it means at least 12 weeks. Listen again, see if you understand better now. Well, how long before he makes a full recovery? It can vary, uh, but I'd allow for a good 12 weeks. Next clip. 
eight, Clint. Shall I take it? Now here you might recognise Ryan, whose real name is Ryan, surprisingly, and he was our cover boy of Cirque Magazine. Here, Ryan asks Alia if he should take it. In this case, he means answer the call. Take the call, not take the phone. Watch again. Eight, Clint. Shall I take it? And here's another clip. Uh, she found the money. She knew it was dodgy. Spinning stories, making her feel like she's overreacting. Now here there are two things you need to look at. Dodgy and to spin a story. To spin a story. Dodgy is another word for dishonest. He's very dodgy. He's a dishonest man. To spin a story. This basically means to tell a story. It could be to deceive someone, like in this case, or just for fun. Uh, she found the money. She knew it was dodgy. Spinning stories, making her feel like she's overreacting. And the next clip. <sighs> Dishwasher's died. The dishwasher has died. This doesn't mean we need to arrange a funeral. Put your handkerchiefs away. There is no crying necessary. This means that the dishwasher has stopped working. It just doesn't work anymore. The dishwasher has died. You can also use this in many other ways. My phone died. Again, no funeral necessary. Watch again. <sighs> Dishwasher's died. Next clip. Like I tricked you into paying. Like I'm some freeloader. A freeloader? This word, freeloader, means a person who takes food, money, a place to sleep in someone's house for example, and doesn't offer anything in return, doesn't try to help out around the house, doesn't try to give money for rent, doesn't even buy you a sandwich. I'm not speaking from experience. Watch again. Like I tricked you into paying, like I'm some freeloader. Next. Should have kept your neb out. So how come I caught him robbing the money out of my purse then? To keep your neb out. This means don't be nosy. Mind your own business. Should have kept your neb out. So how come I caught him robbing the money out of my purse then? Next clip. Right, that's enough lip. Nothing excuses stealing off your hand. I didn't steal. Enough lip. I have two lips. Enough lip. What does that mean? To give lip means to be cheeky, to be rude to someone, to answer them back. So if someone says enough lip, it means stop being cheeky or rude. Have a look at that scene again. Right, that's enough lip. Nothing excuses stealing off your hand. I didn't steal. Next clip. Right, see you back at yours. At yours. Your what? This means at your home, where you live. Simple. Let's go back to yours. Right. See you back at yours. Bye. And now the last clip. Always land on your feet, don't you? To land on your feet. I landed on my feet. This means to be successful or lucky especially after having a period of not having success or luck. Watch that last scene again. Always land on your feet, don't you? Now that you know all the lingo, go and watch the complete episode of January the 10th, 2022. Part 1 and Part 2.